are you? Have you ever wondered who you really are? Hi, my name is Tzu, and in this video we're going to answer this eternal question. Well, many may think that this question is too philosophical and that it's not really answerable because the I is an abstract concept, a product of our mind. It is not a real thing. The truth is that the I is not a made-up concept. It's a real phenomenon. In fact, it's the one most real thing in your life, but I'll explain this claim in another time. The most interesting thing is that each one of us has at this moment all the necessary knowledge and experience to answer this question. So, let us start with the common answer. If I asked you or any other person on the street, who are you? You or he may say, well, I'm John. And then I'd say, yeah, but you can change your name to Michael and you will still remain yourself. And then he might answer, well, of course I'm not my name, it's only a reference. I'm a human being. And this is the common answer. We are human beings. A biological organism. In other words, I am my body. But why do we limit our eye to the boundaries of the body? Let's say we are in a car. Why don't we identify ourselves as the car? Why don't we say, I am the car? And the simple answer you would give might be, because I'm still me even if I'm not in the car. Even if the car ceases to exist, I remain. Therefore, I'm not the car. In other words, the thing which is me must remain constant everywhere I am. And therefore, I am my body, since my body is everywhere I am. Is it? Well, let us examine if this is true. And in order to do so, we'll have to do a short mental experiment. I want you to imagine that you have lost your palm. Please, you do not have to imagine how or why, just gently imagine that you do not have your palm anymore. Now, while doing that, ask yourself if you are still you, or whether you're someone else. And it is most obvious that you'll answer that you're still yourself. Just as you continue being yourself without the car, you continue to be yourself without your palm. This means that the palm is yours, but it is not you. Now, continue to imagine yourself without a foot, a leg, a kidney, an ear, and check if you are still you. You can easily apply this test to almost every part of your body, and in fact there are so many people who can testify to this, since they had actually lost parts of their body but remained themselves. So, we have found something incredible. The I is not the body. I'm not my body. Well, at least not most of its parts. It might be more difficult to examine if we are the brain, for example. But I'll cover this issue in a separate video, since it's not really necessary in order for us to continue our investigation. So, what is the I? Who am I? Well, maybe I am the mind, the psyche. The mind, psyche, or what I prefer to call the inner world, is composed mainly of three types of impulses coming either from our memory or from our presence perception. These impulses are sensations, which come from the five senses, emotion, such as anger, fear, love, etc., and thoughts. Their unique composition forms what we may call our personality. It is quite easy for us to imagine ourselves as a mind separate from the body. We have all seen movies like Avatar, Big and Heaven Can Wait, in which a person lives in a different body and remains himself. So, are we our mind? First of all, I can notice that my thoughts, emotions and sensations change each moment, so they cannot be me, remember? The thing which is me must remain constant everywhere I am. If I can lose or change a part of me and remain myself, this part is not me. This is valid to physical parts as well as mental parts. I feel sad, and then I stop feeling sad, and in both cases, I'm the same me. Even the total sum of thoughts and memories, which we call our personality, cannot be me, since it changes over time. As a baby, I didn't have the memories and thoughts I have now, but this baby was still me. But if I'm not my mind, then who am I? So, let us deepen our investigation, and in order to do so, we can be assisted by the following kind of sentences. I hear my thoughts. I experience joy. I feel cold. 
We can see in these sentences that the I is separate from the thoughts, the emotions or the sensations. This isn't just a form of expression, this is an accurate description of the psychological phenomenon taking place inside of us. There is the thought, the emotion or the sensation, and there is the I who observes or experiences this particular thought or emotion. Now, I have just said something that might be difficult to understand, because it's very subtle. In the background of our inner world exists another layer, the layer of experience or awareness. You do not have to believe me, see for yourselves. Do the following simple exercise. Close your eyes and imagine a house. It doesn't have to be a clear image. The important thing is that you will see something, even a blur. Now, look at the image in your head. Do you see it? If you do, ask yourselves two questions. Who sees the image? What is the thing which sees the image? You might want to pause the video for a moment and do the exercise. Welcome back. If you have done the exercise and you have done it seriously, you could easily answer the first question. Who sees the image? And the answer is I. I see the image. And what is the thing that sees the image? It is certainly not a sensation or emotion, nor it is a thought. The house is a thought. The thing that sees the house is an observer, an experiencer. So you see, the mind and the I who experience it are not the same. I am not the mind, I am the experiencer. There is a word for what I have called the experiencer, and it is consciousness. But the word consciousness is often used with different meanings, like intelligence or thought. So from now on, when I use the word consciousness, I will use it with a specific meaning. The capacity to experience, to be aware of. Is there anything primordial to consciousness which is the real I? I haven't found one yet. We can say I observe my consciousness, but this sentence has no meaning. So at this point, this is my answer. I am consciousness. Realizing that we are consciousness is a key factor in understanding reality, and it leads to new insights and discoveries in the field of science, philosophy, and even in our understanding of our daily life. I hope to share with you some of the insights it has brought me in the next videos. This also gives rise to new questions, which I don't have the answers to, such as, is consciousness a product of the brain, as scientists believe today? or is it independent of the brain? In any case, if, like me, you feel the importance of understanding the answer to the question, who am I? Please share this video so it can reach as many as people as possible. If you have any questions or comments, please write them below so we can open a discussion on this topic that may lead to new understandings. Thanks for watching and remember who you really are. Finding that we are consciousness naturally leads to the question, what is consciousness? So I've created a video explaining what consciousness is and what its attributes are. You can watch it by pressing the link on the left. Now, remember the mental experiment we did to show that we are not our body? If you remember, I said that with this method it is difficult to conclude whether we are the brain or not. This issue is covered on the link on the right.